Welcome back to Home Theater Gurus. This is episode 36. So today we're going to be taking these old paradigms of mine. I got these back around 2001, 2002. These are the focus bookshelves. And these were my first kind of step into good speakers. You know, before these I had Home Theater in the boxes. So they're kind of sentimental and I've held on through two of them through the years. So we're going to be putting a burl veneer on them. And I've got this from uh, Veneer Supplies. It's a really good place to buy your veneer. They've got even stone veneer. you got some crazy different veneers out there. This one I got in the bargain bin. It's a great place to find some good deals. I think I got a lot of eight of them. Now this is a burl and it's very, very wavy when it dries out. So we're going to be using a veneer softener. We're going to soak them down really good with this veneer softener. And I'm going to be putting plastic or trash bags actually between each one while we press them. And you don't have to do the trash bags. You can go straight to the next method or the next step, which is, which is uh, drying and pulling the softener back out of the wood. But I just want to put them in here and press them like this just to really push all that veneer softener into them. Just because they are in pretty bad shape. You see, they're very wavy. We couldn't use these like this. And they're dry and there's some cracking in. This was the Borgen bin. So there's some flaws in the wood itself that normally, you know, you try to avoid on your, you know, using those problem areas like some of the cracks we have but we're not going to worry about it on these this is more about the process and they're still going to look awesome and look like they're they cost way more than what i paid for them and they go in my shop like i said they're sentimental i just keep them in my shop shop speakers but here's my this is what i'm using as a press See, i've got a lot of weight on there it's just pressed between two three quarter inch pieces of uh, plywood all right it's been an hour i'm going to go ahead and remove it you're going to see they are nice and flat already. That veneer softener has worked its way into them and you know they're very they're pliable now and soft and now we're going to layer the uh, paper towels between each layer of veneer and we're going to begin removing the veneer softener back out of the wood. All right back to the press we go. We're going to let it sit for about an hour and it's been about an hour and we're removing it. So you see the paper towels, I mean, they're all red looking. That's actually the color of the burl wood. It's just, it's a natural color of this wood. You see, we've removed a lot of moisture. And we're gonna go ahead and put them on the press again. And we'll come back in about another hour and change out our paper towels. And here we go. See the paper towels are already, you know, pretty dry. So that first time we pressed them, we really removed the majority of the moisture. So now we're gonna do it one more time and let it sit overnight. You can see how pliable and flat that veneer is, where before it was just really unusable and you know, too brittle and wavy to, to use. All right, here we are the next morning. Paper towels are looking dry. See the wood even looks different. It's lighter. So uh, we're ready. And you see how flat it is and how pliable it is. No longer brittle. Now it's going to continue to air dry, you know, now that we have it out of the press. And it's going to be a few hours before I actually put it on the speaker. So, you know, it's continuing to dry out. So we're going to go ahead and cut everything to size. You know, cut it a quarter inch or so around all the edges, you know, a little bit larger around all the edges because you don't want it too small. We're gonna come back and trim it to fit and make it perfect in a little while. So you're gonna go ahead and get all of your pieces cut and you'll just stack them up and you'll have like a little veneer kit laying off to the side. And don't press too hard, you know, make sure you have a good knife, good sharp knife, but don't try to do it all in one cut. Try to make several passes because you don't want to mess up the edges you know the veneer is kind of grainy and you can kind of tear those edges. Now burl is a very, oh there we go right there you see the stack it's all ready to go. Burl is a very you know wavy wood that's why if you use, when it's used it's always used as a veneer not really as a solid piece because I mean it would bend and you know be hard to deal with but it's a very popular veneer. Now we're going to be protecting our baffle just to keep the uh, our glue that we're going to be using from getting all over it. 
Now, if these are your, you know, most special speakers ever, you may want to remove all the drivers, you know, but I'm just going to be real careful with them. Now, I'm going to be applying this with contact cement right over the vinyl veneer. I tried to remove the vinyl veneer, but, I mean, it's been on there for almost 20 years, and it was tearing up the wood. You know, I tried on the bottom. It was going to tear the wood up getting it off, and it was way too much, too difficult. This vinyl veneer is not going anywhere. I tested it with the contact cement. It did great. didn't mess up the vinyl. So we're just going to go ahead and use this contact cement right over the vinyl veneer that the manufacturer put on. Now, you know, if I had wood, wood cabinets, or if I was able to rem easily remove this vinyl, you know, where I was going wood to wood, I would use wood glue. And, you know, probably use there's an iron method where you can actually put the wood glue on both the veneer and the enclosure. You can let it dry, and then you can actually use an iron, and, you know, the heat from the, you know, the clothes iron will bond the two. And I probably would have done a method like that, but because uh, I'm not going on to wood, I'm going on to a vinyl, we're going to use contact cement, which works great. I've used it in other speaker projects, so uh, there's no worries there. And, you know, I'm using just a putty knife here. Oh, you can see a little drip getting on my baffle, which I did get. It didn't hurt anything. But, uh, so I'm using this little scraper, this putty, or whatever you want to call it, knife, just trying to get that cement on there as flat and as even as possible. I'm going to put one coat on the veneer and I'm going to come back and put a second coat on the speaker. Once that speaker uh, tacks up or the cement tacks up on it, I'll put another layer. And then once everything's tacky, we'll combine the two. I'll put the veneer on top of it. Here we go. Make sure that your edges are perfect. That they're hanging over a tad bit before you touch the two together because once you touch them, it's there. You're gonna, if you try to remove it, you'll mess up your veneer. And I'm using this hard roller, the veneer roller, to press it on. Just make sure it's nice and perfect. Works really good. Now be careful on the edges here. You know you don't want to roll over the edge because you are overhanging a little bit, and then you'll you know you'll put a seam or you mess up that edge of that veneer. All right, we flipped the little speaker over and we're gonna trim it. Now it doesn't have to be perfect because we're gonna come back in a few minutes and we're gonna make it perfect with another method that's a little more gentle than using a knife. So, but again, don't try to make this or uh, cut this all at one, if, with one cut, make multiple cuts. Veneering is actually one of the easier methods to, uh, you know, dress up speakers or anything really. It's a, uh, it's pretty quick and easy if you find a nice veneer you like. I mean, they even have stick-on veneer. Now, of course, some people like to use a foam roller or a brush to apply the contact cement. You know, I'm using what I've got, but uh, you know, use whatever works for you. All right, we're putting the second coat on the cabinets. Again, I'm putting two coats of contact cement on the cabinets, and I'm going to have just one coat on the veneer. And once they both tack up, we're going to put it on. I've already rolled it, so I skipped that step, so you won't have to watch it twice. And we're going to trim it. Again, don't worry about trimming it perfect. I'm just trying to remove most of the material because we're going to come back. And here's our sanding block. Now, the sanding block is nothing more than a piece of three quarter inch MDF. Just find a nice flat piece of wood. You're going to get some sandpaper, nothing too coarse, you know, 200 uh, grit or, you know, even 300 grit will work. You know, you don't want to remove too much at a time. You're just going to lay the sandpaper down, put the block or put some spray glue on the back of your block and lay it on the back of the sandpaper and now they're glued together. Take your little utility knife, trim around the edges and you've got your sanding block. I mean, it literally takes 30 seconds to make a sanding block like this. But I wouldn't use like a rubber sanding block or anything like that. You want something very, very flat, lightweight, easy to use because you wanna be able, you know, this is what's giving you your straight edges. You want something, you know, probably three to four inches minimum in length. 
because it's going to find those high spots and that's when you when you're sanding that's what it's working on it's taking those high spots down and this is sped up so you can't see it but i'm actually doing you know kind of long strokes you know because uh longer strokes you know you're going to kind of keep that edge nice and flat all right, so I'll sand it down and we're fixing to put the top on. Now, when I sanded the tops, I held the sanding block flat because I want this top piece is actually going to hang over the sides. So when I sand it everywhere else, you know, it's okay to have like a little bit of an angle, you know, um, not flat when you're sanding. If you notice the blue tape, I wasn't sanding up against the blue tape. I was kind of holding the sanding block at a little bit of an angle, just trying to get a nice clean edge. But on the top, I held that block flat, so I was actually sanding the black part too, the you know the uh, vinyl, because when I lay this veneer on top, it's going to overhang and also stick to the sides, side pieces of veneer, kind of cap it all off. And that's also why I did the top last, because I wanted this top piece to be uh, have no seams. It's just one full piece of veneer. Whereas, you know, if you look at it from the side, you'll have that little seam. If you look real close, you'll have a little seam where that top overhangs the side. And then we're putting our second coat on the tops. All right, and they're tacky, so we're going to go ahead and put them on. When I say tacky, the contact cement is dry, tacky to the touch. And of course it goes on really quick and easy. And after that, I'm gonna call it a night. You see it's, it's dark out that door right there. So here we go the next morning. Let it dry a little bit because you know the veneer can move as it dries. So it's been, the, you know, it's all night. I'm gonna go ahead and cut it. Now moisture like in your house, you know, humidity is different than it is outside. This veneer can move a little bit but uh, I've never really had any big problems with it, but just something to be aware of. Now again, I'm not trying to make these cuts perfect. I'm just removing some of the excess material. And we're gonna use our sanding block to get it perfect. Now I don't wanna mess up you know, if I sand flat, I'll be tearing the tape up. So I'm kind of, you know, holding a little bit of an angle. And on these corners, like uh, we, I did go flat. You see right there where you can uh, sand at the side as well. When I sand that top, I'm sanding the sides because I do want that nice and flat. And I'm cleaning up that top piece. Now I've got a few cracks in this. Like I said, this was bargain bin uh, veneer. So it's not perfect. So I'm going to do a little trick here where I take some wood glue and I fill in the gap. And then I've got some 320 grit sandpaper I'm going to put on my sander. And you see all this dust is actually wood. It's some of the veneer, you know, the dust from the veneer wood. And it's pulling it into that glue in those uh, cracks. Just a little trick that you can use to kind of, you know, hide minor flaws now a small crack it would completely hide it where you really wouldn't see it but these are some pretty large cracks like i said this was a it's a shop speaker so it's more about you know the method than me trying to make them look absolutely perfect because you know if i was doing these for like my living room i probably would have ordered some more veneer that didn't have any cracks or somewhere i could avoid the cracks but with what i had left over this veneer you know i was just forced to use some of those pieces but i really don't think the cracks look that bad and if you wanted to, you could come back and color match them because they're so big that it is going to hide it by using this method to a degree, but they're not completely hidden. So you could come back and color match it with a pen and then veneer back over, or not veneer over, but use your lacquer and coat over everything again and really hide them or even maybe make those cracks look really, really good. Because a lot has to do with the color of the crack. It's going to be a little bit lighter than we're when we're done, but you know, kind of is what it is. All right. So now we're going to be just getting these ready to seal or to put our uh, finishing touch on it, which is going to be lacquer. 
Now there's polyurethanes, you know, there's other materials you or surfaces you can put on here besides lacquer. The reason I chose lacquer is because that's what a lot of cabinet makers use lacquer. A lot of the furniture in your house is finished in lacquer. So uh, it's just really easy to apply. Now I actually somehow deleted or didn't hit the record button on the first coat of lacquer. This is the second coat. That's why the cabinets already look darker. But uh, I'm using these cans from Home Depot. It's Deft Spray Lacquer. I've tried a different brands. This one shoots great. I mean, it has a nice fan. It's not just a circular, you know, uh, spray. It's kind of a fan like an HVLP would spray and it sprays on perfect. I tried brushing this stuff on, but nothing comes close to spraying it. It gives you a perfect finish. And this little job is so small, it's not worth getting the HVLP out. I mean, this is a $5 can, this whole project. I think I spent, uh, I used about a can and a half. So I use less than $10 of spray lacquer on these speakers here. And I put about seven coats of lacquer. Lacquer dries within minutes. And what I mean by that is if a fly lands on it one minute after you spray it, it's not going to leave any mark. You can touch it within two minutes. You can go up there and touch it with your finger and it'll be dry. So I'm recoating these in like three to four minutes. I'll come back and put another coat. So I can put seven coats on here in no time. Now let's say you get a run in your veneer, you, you know, you didn't have the can moving while you were spraying, you stopped mid-spray or something like that, and you got to run, you know, which is a big no-no, you don't stop. You see how I'm spraying nice, even back and forth, trying to get half lap coverages, you know, with every pass, but you don't want to go too heavy because they're going to make multiple passes. So there's no sense in trying to go super heavy. You just want nice, even coats. But say, say you mess it up you can sand between coats you know give it a couple hours to dry really good don't try to sand while it's gummy but uh you can hit it with some uh, you can wet sand it you can do that too but you can use like some couple hundred grit sandpaper nothing too coarse and clean it up and then you can you know come back and continue to add layers of lacquer so just be aware that you can fix it now you can also hit it with uh, like automotive uh compound like we did in uh, you know one of our last videos you can hit it with a compound and a, and a compound pad and they come back with a buff buffing uh, agent and buffing pad and you can really make them look good like that too now this speaker here is done because it dries so fast I don't have any trash in it I don't have any bugs in it I mean it is perfect it is professional looking finish as is and I didn't have to do anything to it you know but spray this lacquer on there it sprays so well and I mean it's an exceptional finish and I'm using a satin because I could, I've tried glosses and stuff but I feel like it just hides the finish and the texture of the wood so I, the satin just kind of brings it out I mean look at that they, these turned out really really good they don't look like a cheap pair of paradigms anymore but anyway guys I hope you enjoyed this video if you're in the home theater check us out so subscribe don't forget to hit that like button and hit that notification bell so you know the new videos are going to come out. I mean, uh, anyway, yeah, this project, it does look good. Those turned out exceptional. It'll be some really nice little shop speakers. All right, guys, I'll see y'all next time. I'm out of here.